There are many games that we would love to show but no longer have. If you have a copy of a game that you think could be a classic, please get in touch with WSCS TV at 920-459-6663 and maybe we can get that game into our next classic series. Green Bay Southwest came to town ranked number one in the state, but would they leave Sheboygan still number one? This game was provided by Rocky Bergman and begins with me interviewing Southwest coach Casey Zakowski. South coach Dan Koopman told me years later he used that interview as motivation during the pregame talk to the team. The game was played in the old gym. Check out all the familiar faces in the crowd. The game was a defensive struggle, but still proved very entertaining. The post-game interview features Ryan Stubbe and Nate Bergman, Rocky's son. Bergman's comments are classic Nate. Stu Hoffensberger does the play-by-play, -play and I provide the color. Now it's time to get a soda and a bowl of popcorn and to sit back and enjoy the game. Think of this team maybe in the same kind of mode as a Marquette team under Al McGuire. They don't really have a superstar, just a bunch of players that all get the job done. They're very balanced. I think their high scorer, Nate Sorensen, averages about 11 or 12 points a game. And I looked at the stats from uh, when they played North two weeks ago, and it was uh, Gertz and uh, Poles. Each had 12, Sorensen had 10. That was their high scores for that night. So you're right, they're absolutely uh, balanced. Sheboygan South on a little bit of a roll, and they gave the Southwest team a tough time on their own floor, losing by just eight. But South's really going to have to find the range, I think, from three if they're going to have a chance in this one tonight. Uh, let's talk about Southwest, what they got to do. They got to shut down the uh, quickness of South, and uh, South is really very quick. I think they're going to give them a better run tonight than North did two weeks ago. But uh, South has to start hitting their shots, and if they can hit from out, that'll open up some uh, driving lanes for uh, Nate Bergman, which will create some more uh, opportunities to score. Plus, they also got to get some good inside play from Wolfel and Rogers. Plus, it's a home court, and that can be a big advantage if they can stick close and get this game tight in the second half. These rims are the tightest in the conference, and you know that. You've played around through the league, and so have I. And that's a big home court advantage, the way the rims play. And uh, the South fans are going to be behind their team, and uh, that, again, is going to make it tough for Southwest. All right. We're going to take a timeout, but when we come back, Mike had a chance to talk with the coach of the number one rated team in the state, Casey Zakowski from Green Bay Southwest. Stay with us. Health one. Joining me is Casey Zakowski, the head coach of the Green Bay South, uh, Green Bay Southwest Trojans, the number one ranked team in the state. Uh, coach, I think there's two ways you can look at being number one. You can talk about, you know, being a monkey on your back, which is a negative kind of thing, or it can be something that you can enjoy. How have you and your team and your fans handled the, uh, you know, the, the nice thing of being number one? Well, it's been a real thrilling season for our kids and for the fans, too, to be ranked uh, so high in that Associated Press poll. The kids have done a very good job of, of handling uh, what I would call a nice distraction. They've stayed pretty focused in practice. Uh, they're still very attentive and working hard. And we really don't talk about it much with the kids. I think with the fans, it's it's a little different. I know around school, there's a lot of talk about the state tournament and, and this and that. And that uh, sometimes maybe the fans can be your, your own worst enemy. But overall, I'm really proud of the, of the way the kids have, have handled this. And hopefully we can just keep things going. Now, going into the season, you and Manitowoc and uh, North were you know rated quite highly in the preseason polls. Uh, have you been surprised by the success of your team? I've been a little surprised. I didn't think we'd be undefeated at this point. We knew going in we had a, a veteran team, a lot of seniors back, and we thought we could contend for the conference. And we knew Manitowoc, North, South would be right up there too. So, so we expected to contend and compete very well. To be where we're at, though, I, I guess I'm a little surprised. I didn't think we'd be undefeated at, at this point. Now, I had an opportunity to see your team play at North, and uh, you really took it to them with a 20-point victory. And uh, one of the things that surprised me about your team was the pace at which you played that night. Well, we are playing a little faster this year. We've been 
predominantly a half-court team over the years, and we feel we have the personnel where we can, can look to push and, and take advantage of the opportunities in the open court. And the way North plays, too. North North plays, uh, plays a very fast game. They, they, they press, of course, and push the ball themselves. And so in a game like that, uh, there are going to be more oppor opportunities presented to push the ball yourself and, and take it to the basket. And, and we were successful doing that. We've had some success against other teams doing that, too. So we're, we're still not a real high-powered, fast-breaking team, but when the opportunity is there, we'll, we'll look to push it up. Now, yeah, you're going to have a tough game tonight. I think uh, Salt will give you a good run. What do you guys need to do to be successful in the game tonight? Well, I, I know it's going to be tough, and, and the kids better believe it's, it, it's going to be, be tough tonight. We've Over the years, we've come down here to South, and, and we've had our shares of, of ups and downs. Last year, they beat us pretty handily, and, and they have pretty much the same team back. And I know this year is a, a different year, but it, we expect a tough game. I think we, we have to do an excellent job of containing Nate Bergman and not let him uh, kill us off, off his dribble penetration. And we obviously have to mark Stubbe. Stubbe's gonna, he, he'll get his points, but we can't let him go wild and, and have a huge night against us. And their inside guys are kind of sneaky. I think Walpole and, and Rogers can score a little bit inside. And they have some other kids who can shoot. Kerwin, leader. So I really think we're going to have to win it on the defensive end tonight and try to keep them in, in check and really focus on Bergman and Scooby. Who can we look at as uh, the fans watch the game? Who can we look at from your squad to do a lot of scoring and do uh, some of the important things that uh, you need to be have done to win the game? We've had very good balance uh, really the whole season. We have three or four kids averaging between 9 and 12 points a game. We've had different kids be leading scorers every night. So I think you can see uh, the Sorensen boy, Gertz, Kowaleski, one of the Alcocks is probably uh, do most of our scoring tonight. Coach, I want to thank you very much for uh, stopping over. I appreciate it a lot. Good luck the rest of the season and uh, especially in the tournament trail. Well, thanks for asking me. We'll be right back with the uh, tip-off of tonight's ball game. announced we're just moments away from the opening tip. Green Bay Southwest tonight will start Jason Alcox, number three, Nate Sorensen, 21, Jason Nolan, number 15, along with Nick Gertz, number 51, and Justin Kowaleski, number 45. Sheboygan South will answer with Nate Bergerman at one guard, along with Ryan Stubbe, Josh Kerwin, Mark Wolfel, and Chris Rogers. Stu Hoppensberger here, along with Mike Martin, and Mike, hopefully uh, a repeat performance from South from uh, something they did before Christmas, taking Southwest all the way to the wire uh, in a game played in Green Bay. One thing you got to give South is they play awfully hard. They're a little undermanned, especially underneath the basket, but uh, they play awfully hard. They gave uh, Manitowoc quite a run here. That was Sorensen with the ball. Ockcox on the drive, and he's fouled by Stubbe as uh, he beat him with a quick first step. The uh, perimeter players for Southwest are extremely quick, and uh, they have another Alcox that comes off the bench that's very good also. He's very quick. That's uh, Tom Alcox. Southwest very patient offensively, play great defense. They're only averaging about 55 points a game, yet they have a perfect record. This is Alcox out front. Nolan goes to the corner, touch pass inside, and another foul as that was Kowaleski going to the hoop. One thing Southwest doesn't do a whole lot of, Stu, and that is uh, shoot the three-point shot. They uh, like to work the ball inside. Foul went against Chris Rogers, his first personal. Second team foul against the Red Wings. Nick Gertz likes to post up inside. And, and another foul. This one, I believe, will go against Bergman. Three fouls on South in the first 31 seconds of the game, and that does not bode well. I was going to say, this is getting to be an expensive possession. Sorensen inbound, knocked away by Bergman, who brings it the other way, goes coast to coast. Bank shot rolls off the rim, no good. Now Bergman strips the ball away. 
fouled, no call. Wolfel misses a short bank shot off Cox with the rebound. Bergman's the one guy that can uh, more than keep up with the uh, quickness of Southwest. As a matter of fact, he's quicker than most of their guys, and we saw it right there. Bounce pass inside for Kowaleski, and another whistle. This time, I think Kowaleski's going to be called for the push-off. They're right there. His first personal, the first team foul whistle against the Trojans, and South will bring the ball the other way. Just a minute gone here in the opening period of play from South High School. Man to man defense by Southwest. This is Bergman with the basketball. Tied up. Now to Rogers. Stuby open. Stuby trying to pose. Kerwin couldn't get it to him. Now it's Bergman. Southwest is very sound fundamentally on their defense, and uh, a lot of what Coach Sokowski uses is what Dick Bennett uh, used at Green Bay South, or at Green Bay, UW Green Bay. Kerwin's jump shot no good. Alcox with the bounce pass for Nolan. Now the quick touch pass inside. The big man missing was Gertz. Rebound to South. We're still scoreless. Two minutes gone. Well, South has had a couple of real good looks at the basket, but haven't gotten it in. This is Ryan Stuby in the corner. Tried to go inside to Wolfel, taken away by Gertz. Alcox brings it the other way. Three-point shot on the way. It's short of its mark. Gertz with the rebound. Well, not good block out that time. You got to mark him, keep him off the boards. Nolan into the corner. Kowaleski couldn't handle the pass. Rodgers comes up with it for the Red Wings. Great help defense by Chris Rodgers. He dropped down inside from the weak side. Stuby winds his way inside. His shot no good. Maybe intimidated a little bit by the big man, Gertz. All Cox out front. Chris Rodgers has uh, Gertz on the inside, and Wolfel has Kowaleski. We've gone almost three minutes. We're still scoreless. Bergman just missed the steal. Sorensen now throws it away, and Bergman comes up with a loose ball. Lead pass ahead to Kerwin. A little bit too much. The save. He knocked loose to South West. Alcox on the drive and scores. So the first points of the game come at 4.52 remaining in the first quarter. More than a three-minute drought for both teams. Again, uh, both teams playing very hard defensively. Uh, you mentioned on the opening, South has to make their shots. This is Kerwin out front. Very vocal on the uh, southwest side. You can see him in your shot right there. They're going to have to hit a couple before they get quiet. Rogers in the lane. Jump shot good. Nice little turnaround over the uh, taller defender. Rodgers is a kid, Stu, that's really come on as the season has progressed. Averaging just shy of six points a game. And we're halfway through the first period, tied at two. Gertz with position inside on Rodgers and hits the bank shot. That's a mismatch right there. Rodgers giving up about six inches. Well, the other thing, the way they moved the ball that time, Stu, there was no help defense. And uh, once Rodgers... Uh, once his man got the ball, it was one-on-one, -on -one, and like uh, you said, it's a mismatch. They got to try and uh, eliminate those situations where he doesn't have any, where he does have help. Alcox whistled for the foul. That's his first personal. Bergman to inbound. Throws it off the back of the defender. What a great play by Bergman, and he ties the score at four. Heads up thinking there. Gertz out front, Kowaleski was camping in the lane. Uh, he had good position and uh, kind of surprised Gertz didn't get him the ball in there. Alcox with a quick step to the left, now dishes back out. Kowaleski will try the pull up jump shot and scores. His first points. He's a good short range shooter, you gotta keep track of him. Rogers on the drive, he's fouled by Kowaleski and that'll be two personal fouls on the southwest forward. Bergman trotting off the floor. Uh, 
getting rid of his gum, I think it was, Stu. Either that or it was a major league Luger. It is the cold season. <laughs> <laughs> Bergman will inbound. I think maybe the Southwest defenders have figured out they better turn around and look a little bit when Bergman's throwing the ball in. Rogers whistle for a travel and a South turnover. Uh, looked like they had Chris Rogers scouted right there because as soon as he caught the ball, he wanted to go to his right and uh, the uh, defender, Jason Nolan, got right there and forced the turnover. We have an Alcox tandem in terms of the guards right now. Zero, who's checked into the game, is Tom Alcox. This is a drive and a block from behind by Bergman. South comes up with a loose ball, but Kerwin lost his balance, throws it right to Alcox. His shot blocked, but a foul call. Again, uh, South really playing good defense, uh, just the misfortune of losing his balance, and then Kerwin had to get rid of the ball and uh, threw it right to the uh, Southwest player. Josh whistled for the foul, his first. And that's four team fouls already here in the first quarter. So Jason Alcox at the line. Rolls in the first, he'll get another. Soft touch on that free throw. Now it's real important, there you see Coach Casey Zakowski in the middle, uh, for uh, Wolfel to block out big number 51. Second free throw miss, rebound by Rogers. Ball stolen by Tom Alcox. Passes to his brother who overlays, but Gertz follows it in. A few years ago, Stu, you didn't see uh, Southwest running a break like that. 9-4, the number one rated Trojans with the lead. here in the background are the fans from both schools. South trying to keep up with them, the South fans. Kerwin 15-footer was off the mark. Southwest controls the board. Tom Alcox on the drive. He was blocked. And then I believe a blocking foul is going to be called. No, they're going to get Bergman on the block attempt, and that's uh, his second personal foul. Well, it's uh, very important for South to keep him on the floor as much as possible. He's going to have to play under a little more control now, uh, not pick up that third foul. We've only got one listed on the board, but I'm pretty sure that is two for Nate. Tom Alcox on the line, and he misses the first free throw. Hits the second, so another one for two trip for the Trojans, and they lead 10-4. Their biggest lead of the game at 2-10 here in the first quarter. Scooby with the ball, tries to shoot over the big center. Wolfel with a nice play, knocks it off a Southwest defender, so it'll stay on this end of the floor. Well, we saw this when uh, South played Manitowoc's through the height. He's uh, open, good time out by Coach. Very good time out, and I'll tell you, the South needs to hit their shots. I thought uh, in the first five or six minutes of the quarter, they got some really nice looks at the basket, but they just weren't able to get it to go down. Uh, they got to start hitting those shots. And if they don't, the Southwest crowd will continue to be loud and louder. Well, a couple of three-point bombs would, would certainly quiet them down. It's been a tall order this year, though. Steal by Tom Alcox, ball loose and picked back up by Stuby. South has some numbers. Now Stuby will hold up and look to set the offense. Kerwin on the drive, scores. Nice pass that time by Ryan Stuby to the cutting Kerwin. Kerwin's first basket of the night. In uh, the interview with uh, Coach Zakowski, he used a soccer term. He said, we got to mark Stuby, and what that means is Get up on him, not allow him to shoot open three-pointers. Sorensen missed with the long outside jumper. Alcox with the board. He missed, but then a foul called inside. That's going to go on Mark Wolfel. And uh, if they got him for two, Stu, 
That's where, that's right. The uh, ball that we thought was on uh, Nate Bergman was actually tagged to uh, Wolfel, and this is gonna be his second foul. So Bergman does only have one, according to the book. 102 remaining first quarter. Southwest put an eight point run together here and now lead by six. Kerwin's basket just moments ago put an end to that streak. Jason Alcox with the basketball, tried to go inside to Gertz, knocked out of bounds. Eric Hosenstein on the nice catch there in the first row of the bleachers. Tom Alcox inbounds to Jason. Gertz inside, misses the air, an air bunny. That was an air bunny, he should have had that one. Maybe it was a little too open. 30 seconds to go, bunch of fresh faces in for South. I'm singing uh, your favorite player, Zach Leiter in there, Stu. In fact, he had the ball there. This is Iskin outside, Chad Iskin. Hemsing, lighter. South playing for one. Smart move, they're only down by six. Uh, what looked six to be seconds to go. Iskin will drive, takes it all away, draws the foul on the big man, Gertz. It looked like a blowout in the making, and uh, you called it, uh, Coach Koopman calling that uh, 22nd timeout to help stem the tide, and uh, they've done that. Have a chance to uh, pull it to within four. This skin hasn't been to the line a lot this year, but he's a 61% shooter which is the exact shooting percentage for the team from the line this year. Bangs in the first one, hit the front, the back, the glass, and the net. I think he ought to get two points for that free throw. What he'll get is another free throw. Well, he would have gotten that anyway. Let's see if he can uh, put this one down, and then uh, South has to play a little defense for 3.3 seconds. First point of the night for Iskin. Second shot is the bottom of the net. Quick inbounds, this is Jason Alcox. Got a pretty good look at the basket from about 25 feet, but it's no good. We played one quarter at Sheboygan South. It's Green Bay Southwest 12 and the Red Wings eight. And the number one rated Green Bay Southwest Trojans lead Sheboygan South 12-8, but South has the basketball. A real smart offensive possession to uh, end the first quarter. Uh, Iskin had an opportunistic drive, got fouled, and then hit his two free throws. Cut the lead to four. Wolf will hit Rogers cutting inside, who was fouled by Adam Dudek. First, Dudek. Per first personal on Dudek. Dudek's a kid you got to keep an eye on, Stu. He's a good long-range shooter off the bench. He had a couple of threes at North uh, two weeks ago. Bergman to inbound. Had to get it in. Kerwin did a nice job of handling the basketball there. Rogers has it knocked away, but saves it to Stuby. The three-point bomb. Good. Ryan Stuby hits a three-pointer, and South is within one. A great effort that time. Uh, kind of lost the ball, but he was able to tip it out. And uh, the defender was slow reacting. Stubbe's first points of the night. He's South's leading score. Bergman with another steal. Ahead to Stubbe. He'll drive fouled. The reach in called on Tom Alcox. Well, you can't say enough about the uh, quickness of Nate Bergman, but uh, we got to keep him on the floor. Great shot there, uh, Coach Dan Koopman. Bergman averaging about four plus steals a game, and he's already had a couple here tonight. Stubbe with a long bomb, just short, rebound by Joe Poles. Got a 
Zaleski, turnaround, jump shot, no good. Rogers last touched it, but they'll give it to Southwest. Well, caught a break there. It definitely looked like uh, Chris Rogers hit it, but uh, not much complaining by uh, Poles either. He just head back down the floor, so uh, maybe he did knock it out. Southwest on a run of seven unanswered points as they climb back into this ball game. Lob for Bergman. <laughs> He bounces it off Balcox to allow South to retain possession. Well, he had the backdoor screen and the lob play set up. Uh, passes a little bit off its mark, and uh, Bergman uh, made a good effort to a uh, oh, good little double hitch there to get it off. Shot didn't go, but Kerwin tracks down the loose basketball. This is Bergman on the right side. Into the corner, it's Rogers dishes back to Bergman. Stuvey will try another three and hits it. Same spot as last time. Just off the uh, left wing. He said two from the left, missed one from the right, but South has the lead at 14-12. And a turnover as Wolfel comes up with the basketball, and Bergman is then fouled by Nate Sorensen. Well, that was excellent defense on the post by uh, Wolfel. Uh, he was able to fight around the uh, posting up poles and uh, make the tip away. Ten straight points reeled off by Sheboygan South. And they have their first lead of the night at 14-12 with 5.51 to go in the half. And uh, surprisingly enough, Stu, uh, Southwest leads in team fouls. Seven to three, seven to six in the... Uh, Bergman's going to go to the line shooting the one and one. And you think over 30 seconds of that first quarter, right at the beginning, South committed three fouls on that trip. Bergman rolls in his first free throw. He started out shooting terribly from the line this year, but he's really come on strong. He's over 60% now on the well, season. Remember that one game he shot up an air ball, and then we had him a couple games later, he did it again. This time he's letter perfect. It's two for two there. He has four, and South's lead grows to four at 16-12. Alcox on the drive. Gertz misses the bunny. Loose ball. Stuby comes up with it. Well, I think the official had a fist made, which is a foul call, but he changed it. South's got a timeout, and it's going to be a 20. Possessions will loom important today. And so that's probably a wise call as South gets the turnover and now has the basketball. Well, at the four-point lead and the ball, they're going to have a great opportunity here to kick the lead up to six, possibly seven points. There you see Jason Lederman, uh, Dan Koopman in the background. Southwest has gone four and a half minutes without a score. And that's a little surprising. Uh, South has played really good defense on the interior, and uh, Southwest is not a real good perimeter kind of team. This is Kerwin out on top. Ball loose. Alcox comes away with it, and then travels. You can credit that turnover to the uh, hustle of Sheboygan South. I mentioned before, Stu, that uh, Southwest really plays good fundamental defense. Uh, we'd have to label uh, South in that same vein because they really play a good hustling, fundamentally sound defense. Wolf will pull a 15-footer short off the rim. Jason Alcox with the rebound for Southwest. Tom Alcox will take it to the hoop. They'll call a blocking foul on Rogers. And I think Josh Kerwin might have caught a stray elbow in the forehead that time. Now he's definitely down. Well, Chris had the right idea to get in position and take the charge. He was just a little bit late getting there. Well, Kerwin's going to head off to the uh, locker room, and uh, Iskin's going to come in for him. Hopefully not too serious an injury. Well, 
wiping up some perspiration, which uh, is a good thing. Alcox lost his balance on the block, and as he was falling to the uh, right side, his arms were flailing out. And I just happened to see it happen, and it was an elbow or forearm right to the head. First free throws missed by Alcox. Stu, that's how I normally play defense, flailing away. Southwest has not shot very well from the line. 0 for 2 there, 2 for 6 on the night. And South with a chance to pad their lead. Rodgers will drive. Shot no good. Ball knocked out of bounds by Southwest. Well, Chris Rogers had a great drive to the basket. If it wouldn't have been for the uh, Nick Gertz coming over and disrupting him, I think you'd had two points. Bergman inbound to Iskin. Stuby double teamed on the right side. Well, they're playing a 2-3 zone right now. And uh, Bergman doing the right thing, trying to get penetration. Stuby might have got away with a walk. Shot was short. Jason Alcox on the other end. A layup oh! blocked away by Bergerman, but they'll call a foul. Like to see that one again. It's only number two, but uh, looked like he got a lot of ball on that one. Did he get up, Stu? <laughs> Holy cow. I really thought that was a clean block, and we were. We had the perfect angle on it, although we were a little further away. Other end of the floor. Well, that was Smiley Hamauer making a call. I know one guy that wasn't smiling about it. No, that's for sure. Jason Alcox hits his first free throw. John Hamauer is his real name, Stu. He's done quite a few games here in Sheboygan over the years. He's uh, really a nice guy. Uh, plays baseball for West Bend during the summer. And the two free throws end a five and a half minute scoring drought for Southwest. And Alcox now has five points. <laughs> Sheboygan South, upset minded, lead by two here in the first half. Well, a, that's what you call fighting through a screen. Tom Alcox, second personal foul. That's actually his second foul of the quarter. And uh, Kerwin, a pretty good free throw shooter, I believe, is going to be on the line. Well, 43%. I don't know if we call that a good free throw shooter. Sure, that's not his three-point shooting. <laughs> that's it, 43. Oops. Well, he'll jack it up right here. First one is good, and he'll get another. Sometimes it's like a hitter in baseball. You just got to get enough at bats to get the B.A. up there. Kerwin averaging over seven points a game for the Red Wings this year. He probably has a better uh, field goal shooting percentage than he does a free throw shooting percentage. Field goal is at 46, almost 47. A little bit of a delay. A little player maintenance going on out there. Here you get a shot at Josh Kerwin. Three points tonight, looking for his fourth. This one's short, and Gertz with the rebound. Good defense there by uh, Josh to cut off the baseline. That was Nolan. Now it's to Sorensen. He'll take the long jump shot and hits the three. Time the game at 17. First three-point basket of the night for the Trojans. You got to keep track of him. He's their high scorer. Wolfel on the drive, and they're going to call a carry and a turnover for South. Well, he might have had a shot at the basket if he wouldn't have lost his balance because he got around the defender, and there was a little bit of a lane, but then he slipped. Nolan on the right side to Tom Alcox. Southwest very patient on offense. 
Rogers playing the post defense on uh, Gertz. Sorensen with another three-point shot. This one no good, and South comes up with a loose ball. Very good hustle there by Stubbe to track down that loose ball. Stubbe will try to drive, and he's fouled. And that's three on Tom Alcox. Alcox came in off the bench. He was one of the first substitutes. Uh, and uh, he's going to have to uh, sit out probably the last 3.15 of the half. Stubbe will get a chance at the line, his first free throws of the night. And he's a 74.5% free throw shooter on the year. South's leading score at just under 15 points a game. Shot is hard off the rim, and Gertz with another rebound. Well, these missed free throws are big because uh, it gives you an opportunity to grab the lead back, and uh, you know, Southwest has kind of helped out South in that regard, too, by not making their free throws. We're tied at 17 at the three-minute mark of the first half. Well, this is more of the pace that Southwest plays at. Uh, they value each possession, and uh, South does the same. This is Chad Wyman in the game for Southwest. The Trojans working the perimeter. Now tried to get the ball inside, and it's knocked away. But the visiting team will retain possession. Well, Wolfel got his hand in there and was able to knock the ball away from the uh, cutting Southwest player. Gertz outside with a head fake. Pull up 15 footers, no good. Rogers, nice block out and a rebound. Bergman ahead to Wolfel. Wolfel with the layup and really should have gone to the line as. Uh, well, Took a little bit of a hip and a thigh there on his way to the hoop. What he did do is he kept his balance on the shot, which he didn't do the time before, and another good pass by uh, Bergman. South has been very balanced tonight. Wolfel, his first two points. Oh, now good Stubbe trip. with a strip and a steal. Ahead to Kerwin. Kerwin cross court to Bergman. Bergman from the corner, in and out. Oh. Southwest controls the board. Wyman out to Alcox. His shot short. Gertz rebounds. A He's got to have. Go ahead, Stu. He's got to have at least 10 boards already. Good pressure on the shot by Alcox by uh, Stubbe. And Bergman's got a big assignment. He's got to cover up on uh, Sorensen. Don't give him any open shots. Gertz posting. Double team ball knocked loose. Rogers came up with the loose ball. Now Bergman looking for an opening. Stubbe in the corner. South by two, they have the ball. Minute 10 to go. Chris Rogers out to Bergman. He'll take the long shot, it's no good. Rebound controlled by Southwest. Nolan out top. Well, Sorensen setting a back screen. Look out for him to be the shooter. That was Sorensen on top. There's a little axiom. In and another steal for the Red Wings. Kerwin with a bust out. Layup. Ball was blocked. Alcox with the block. He'll bring it the other way. Ball's knocked loose and out of bounds. It will go to Southwest. There's a little axiom in basketball, Stu, that says the best way to get open is set a screen. And uh, what happened there uh, the time before this was uh, Sorensen set a back screen, then he stepped out and was open for just a second, but uh, with Bergman's quickness, he was able to uh, jump back and uh, cover up the shooter. Now, one art that's been lost in the 90s is a reverse layup, and that would have served uh, its purpose pretty well that time on that breakout by Kerwin. Southwest right now with 10 seconds and looking for the last shot of the half. Sorensen will take it, 15-footer, rims out, no good. He gets his own board and scores with just under two seconds to play. Eight, Green Bay Southwest is tied with Sheboygan South at 19 each. Let's do it. Back early for a change. <laughs> 
If you're just joining us, you've missed a pretty solid first half of defense. Definitely defense. Played well by both teams as the number one rated Green Bay Southwest Trojans are even with their host Sheboygan South Red Wings at halftime 19-19. Scoring, as you can imagine, has been pretty balanced. Six players scoring for South in the first half, led by Ryan Stubbe, who hit a pair of three-pointers in the second quarter. Nate Bergman has four, Josh Kerwin three, and then baskets from Wolfel, free throws from Iskin, and a bucket by Rogers. Lead up to 19 for South. Leading all scores was Green Bay Southwest, Nate Sorensen, who had seven, Jason Alcox with five, Nick Gertz four, Justin Kowaleski had two points, and Tom Alcox a free throw, and that adds up to 19, and that's where we are at halftime. Well, you had an interesting uh, stat there, Stu, about the last uh, five minutes of the half. Uh, Sorensen was the only guy that scored any points for the last Southwest. last 12 minutes of the half, as a matter of fact. He's the only guy that scored a field goal in the second quarter for the Trojans. And uh, they haven't had a basket from anyone else since about the midway point of the first quarter. Well, it was an outstanding defensive uh, effort by South in the second quarter, holding uh, Southwest to only seven points. Southwest has the ball to open, and Rogers knocks the pass away, and South has the basketball. Good quickness shown there by Rogers. What he gives up, Stu, in height, he really makes up for in uh, his quickness. Stubbe looked at the three, decided against it. Wolfel's pass is batted away, and now Southwest has the turnover. Considering the intensity of the defense, it's been a relatively clean game as well. Not a lot of fouls. Kowaleski works his way inside. Shot no good. Gertz an offensive board and scores. Until right at the end there, Wolfel had a solid defensive effort on Kowaleski. But uh, once they got the ball inside to him, uh, it was really tough for South to match up with the two big guys. It's the first Trojan lead since early in the second quarter. South running their motion offense, looking for a uh, oh, bad shot there by uh, Rogers. He had contact, and really there could have been a foul called on that, but no whistle, and South gets a break and keeps the basketball. Kerwin worked himself free inside, and then he's fouled. Actually, what uh, Kerwin did is he started up at the elbow, slid down, set a screen for Stubbe, and then slid off of uh, the man he was screening to get open, but uh, again, the taller uh, player was able to block the shot, however, he was fouled. Jason Nolan called for the foul, and it's a two-shot foul. Wolfel was one for two in the first half. And uh, it's not very often, Stu, you see a kid with a better field goal shooting percentage and a free throw shooting percentage. Sure, he's going to be happy that you've mentioned that twice now tonight. <laughs> but he's improved his percentage both trips to the line, a one for two trip, and Kerwin brings South within one at 21-20. Only the facts, please, only the facts. All right, Joe Friday. <laughs> well, Wolfel trying for the steal, wasn't able to get it. And you don't want to leave Kowaleski open. He bangs in the short jump shot, his first point since early in the ball game, and he has four on the night. Bergerman loose underneath. Kerwin finds him with the pass. A uh, great cut, great pass, great catch in the basket. This is Gertz out front. Sorensen will take the left corner jumper, rebound fought for, and then controlled by Stubbe. Kerwin with the drive, and he's fouled. On that last defensive possession uh, by South, they actually had a double team on Kowaleski. They were leaving Nolan pretty wide open uh, to prevent Kowaleski from getting the ball inside. Big center Gertz called on that one. And Stubbe does the same thing Bergman did in the first half, bounces the ball off the defender. Didn't quite get as good a bounce, but another good idea. 
Well, he got a great shot here. And again, the defenders uh, not paying any attention to uh, Stubbe. Whistle and a foul. Southwest uh, having the same problems that South had early in the first quarter. A quick rash of fouls. This one going against Nate Sorensen, his second. We got four across the free throw line. Oh, nice play by uh, Kerwin. And again, Stu, he was the screener on that play, and then he released and got himself wide open. Six points for Kerwin. South has the lead back at 24-23. Little high-low action. And Bergman ties up the big center, Gertz, and it's a jump ball. Possession arrow favors South. What Southwest is doing is they're bringing Gertz up to the free throw line. They're leaving Kowaleski low and looking for a high-low feed. Uh, South has defensed it very well so far here in the third quarter. The Red Wings by one. It's been a tight game throughout. Kerwin's pass was knocked loose. He comes back up with the loose basketball. Ball swings into the left corner to Stubbe. Now Bergman out front. South being very patient with this possession. Bergman inside to Wolfel. That was really good offense to a uh, lot of ball movement. And South grabs a three-point lead and Southwest takes a 20. And Bergman has scored one and distributed two great passes to lead to a six-point South run. Well, what South did on that possession is they didn't force things. You know, we've seen them earlier in the game try to force the issue. That particular possession, they were very, very patient and uh, played really good offense. 446 remaining in the third quarter. Sheboygan South upset-minded as they're playing the number one team in the state, Green Bay Southwest. And as a credit to South, they have made Southwest look anything but the number one team in the state so far in this ballgame. Well, they've, they've done that before with uh, Manitowoc also because uh, they play such good defense. This is Poles with the ball now into the game. 6-6 six, six player for Southwest. Kowaleski, 12-foot pull-up, scores. I know uh, Sorensen is their high scorer, but the two games that I've seen, Kowaleski has really stood out. He has six. South lead. It's by one as Bergman drives and scores. Well, he spotted an opening, and with his quickness, there was no way that Jason Alcox was going to stay with him. It's been Nate Bergman's third quarter. Sorensen with the drive answers. Big hoop right there, cuts the lead to one. Sorensen with nine for the Trojans. Kerwin was open momentarily on the cut. Didn't feel comfortable going to the basket. Stubbe with the drive. Left-handed shot, no good, and then a tied up jump ball goes to Southwest. If he goes to the right, which obviously he couldn't do that time, but if he goes to the right with that kind of shot, it's going to be in. Important possession here, uh, Southwest trailing 27 to 28. There you see a good shot of Casey Zakowski. The offensive tempo is definitely picked up here in the third quarter. Jason Alcox with the basketball. Kowaleski again, this shot no good, but Tom Alcox with the rebound. And a foul called on Bergman. That's gonna be his third. Three on number three. Uh, good defense by Mark Wolfel. He stepped back to uh, help on the back cut and then he recovered on Kowaleski to put some pressure on his shot, which he missed. Poles with the ball. Now Tom Alcox. 
Inside cut Sorensen. And they'll call Wolfel on the foul. Nolan's a starter, Stu, but uh, he's not much of a scoring threat, and the South really hasn't been respecting him on the offensive side. Uh, with the other Alcocks in the ball game, Tom, uh, they have to put a little more respect on his offensive production than they do Nolan. Sorensen is Southwest's leading scorer, and he's shooting two. Nothing but court on the first, and the game's tied at 28. Ryan Hemsing checking in for uh, Bergman. Coach wanting to give him a rest. Uh, if he can stay in the ball game, I mean, uh, South stays close, uh, maybe he can give him a rest these last couple minutes and have him start the fourth quarter with only three fouls. Sorensen hits both free throws. He has 11, and Southwest regains the lead at 29-28. Kerwin, 17-footer, notches it. Having a big quarter with five points. Eight on the night. Stewie playing tough on the defensive end. Alcox to Alcox to Alcox. Jason Alcox on the drive. Kowaleski, easy hoop. There's another axiom in basketball, Stu, that uh, whenever you help on defense, you have to recover. Help is no good if you don't recover, and that's what uh, Wolfel did there. He didn't recover. Stuby long bomb outside, no good. Kerwin with the rebound and a foul on Tom Alcox, his fourth. Some aspirin's gonna be in order for uh, Mr. Kerwin after this one's over. He got knocked in the head in the first half. Now he catches a finger or something in the eye. Uh, he's gonna be okay. He's a really a tough kid. Uh, really nice kid too, Stu. I had a chance to uh, meet him around Christmas time at my uh, relatives. And uh, kind of a tough move for him. He's raised in Watertown for the most part and uh, had to leave his friends to come to South. But I think uh, he's really enjoying at least his uh, basketball experience and I'm sure uh, the rest of his experience here in Sheboygan. Ryan Hemsing in the game for South. He'll inbound to Rogers but the ball's knocked away controlled by Chad Wyman and now Southwest with a chance to add to their lead. Uh, really good patience there by Sorrentino's wide open from about 17 or 18 feet. Kowaleski in the lane scores again. Eight points in a quarter you got to get a body on him. Uh, they double teamed him earlier. He's starting to burn him here in the third quarter. 33-30, Southwest lead. Stuby for three. Hard off the rim. Tracks down his own rebound. Now in the lane, tried to pass. Knocked out of bounds to Southwest. He spotted Hemsing underneath and tried to get him the ball, but uh, Ryan wasn't able to handle it, and it went out of bounds off of him. substitutes here with a minute 19 to go in the quarter. Excellent crowd here tonight, very vocal. Eric Strandberg in for South, as is Zach Leiter, Chad Iskin. Well, this is an important minute, 15 seconds with uh, Bergman out of the game. Gertz works free underneath, misses a layup. Well, they got the wrong guy there. Leiter was the guy that caught him pretty good. But uh, Iskin's going to get the foul. Yeah, I'd love to see the replay on that. Uh, I know you hate it when I disagree with you, Marty, but I uh, thought Leiter had the jump ball, and Iskin really came across with a chop. Big chop on that one. I, I don't were, think so. I think you were blocked so. out by the monitor there. Watch it. Watch that replay. <laughs> uh, we talked to Kerry about the replay. He said the replay machine isn't working. Uh, about 10.45 tomorrow morning, you'll be able to catch that one. Well, the replay will verify that I'm right again. I'm looking forward to that soda you're going to buy again next week. Southwest the inbound. Minute seven to go in the quarter. Nolan went deep to Jason Alcox. 
Southwest has their big lineup in a duo of six, 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 seven on the floor right now. Gertz and Poles, that's Poles at the top with the ball. Didn't even look inside that time, Stu. He might have had the lob pass. 40 seconds to go. Poles jump shot, no good. Ball knocked out of bounds by Gertz, and so South will have a shot with 36.6 in the quarter. Well, this is a long time for a high school team to uh, keep possession of the ball. Let's see if they can do it. 30 seconds to go. Wolfel with the basketball. Looks like South will play for one here. That was a hard pass. Strandberg with good hands to hang on to that one. Hemsing just about traveled. Now Alcox with a steal. And a layup. Under 10. On another turnover. Wyman before the buzzer. No good. So a six point. 35-30, Green Bay Southwest, the top ranked team in the state, trying to hold off Sheboygan South. South trails and has the ball. Stuvey launches a three in and out. Rogers rebound inside, scores. A good little pump fake. And got the shot up and over uh, Gertz, I believe it was. That was a huge play for this juncture of the game. Four points for Rogers. Nolan goes inside to Gertz. Well, Kowaleski getting an extended rest here, Stu. He sat out the last uh, minute or two of the uh, third quarter. And a foul will go against Jason Alcox. And Southwest with their fifth team foul. All make that sixth team foul, and now Alcox is second personal. South with a chance to tie. Correction on the foul call, that was Poles that was nailed for the personal. Stuby on a back cut, but uh, Nolan did some good defense, but didn't recover to the corner. Stuby shot just short. Alcox couldn't control the rebound, tried to throw it off a south defender and missed, and it's Red Wing basketball. Well, I know Stubby's out there trying real hard, and he's got some great looks. Boy, it'd really be huge to have him nail a three-pointer. Long inbound pass to Rogers, and now Bergman will set the offense. Well, they're looking at a 2-3 zone, and uh, Bergman recognized what was happening, and now they're getting their offense set. Nate Bergman for three, and it's a tie game at 35. 6.40 left in the quarter. Bergman with 11 on the night, plus a bunch of steals and assists. Wolfel tough inside on the defense. I know you can't see it on your screen, but uh, he's really playing hard. Alcox out front. Ball knocked loose by Rogers. Bergman comes up with a basketball, and they're going to call a travel. Dan Koopman not happy about that call at all. We were screened. Well, there's Smiley Hamauer talking to Nate Bergman, telling him to uh, hold your composure. Score is still tied. 35 all, 6-10 to go in the ball game. Rogers knocks another one away, and South comes up with the basketball. Well, Bergman thought he had a long pass to Wolfel, but passed it up, and uh, rightfully so. Nolan just about had a steal going the other way. Stuby in the corner. We'll bring it out. Southwest back in a man-to-man. Stuby now on the right side. South being very patient with this possession. Well, the last time they did this, they wound up getting a nice layup by uh, Wolfel. Inside pass was knocked, actually mishandled. Two South players were open, and 
Well, that's one probably knocked it out of the other's hand. I was going to say that was the problem right there. Uh, Kerwin and Rogers were underneath there, and uh, they mixed each other up. An empty possession for South, and Southwest brings it the other way. 5.20 to go. Stu Hoppensperger along with Mike Martin. It's been nip and tuck most of the way. The biggest lead either team has had has been eight points. Kowalewski inside, Ooh. scores, and is fouled. Well, he's got 10 points and a half, 12 for the game, and uh, he's a force inside. All of his points have come in the paint. I figure the 6'6 six, six and 6'7 six, guys would be doing most of the damage there, but that hasn't been the case. He's a good player. Hits the free throw to complete the three-point play. He has 13 points, and it's a three-point Southwest lead. Now, because he makes those uh, short jump shots and doesn't take it to the basket very much, he doesn't shoot a lot of free throws. That was his first tonight, and uh, he only had three in the North game a couple weeks ago. Bergerman got hung up. Now a long shot by Stuby. Good for three in a tie game. Nine Third three of the night for Stuby. He's sitting with nine points. Let's hope we can get him hot down the stretch. Sorensen tries to answer from three short. Stuby with the rebound. One of the few three-point attempts by Southwest here tonight. All spreading the floor, looking for cutters inside. Rogers out to Stuby. Faked the three. Nothing on the drive. He'll bring it back out. Bergman in the corner. Long shot. No good. Rebound Kowaleski. Well, you can credit Sorensen with the big part of that defensive effort by staying on his feet by the on the shot fake from Stuby. Gertz got away with the travel, but comes up short. South with another rebound. They've really cut off the offensive rebound in the Southwest in the second half. They really have, and uh, a lot of that goes to the fact that South is quicker, and uh, they're really doing a good job of blocking out. Kerwin out front, not a Wolfel. And a timeout called for by Sheboygan South. Three minutes, 21 seconds remaining in the ball game. We're all tied at 38. We one remaining in the fourth quarter. 38-38 the score as the number one rated team in the state, Green Bay Southwest, having all they can handle tonight in Sheboygan South. And regardless of what happens tonight, another big game looming, looming for Southwest next week, Friday night. If they are to prevail here tonight, they could basically clinch a conference title with a win at Manitowoc next Friday. However, with a loss here, that would be uh, a game that would decide first place in the league. So, any way you look at it, next Friday night, Manitowoc will be another big game. That's a game worth uh, driving up to watch in the field house in Manitowoc. I know, uh, Stu, you've talked about possibly going up there. I know it's a huge game in the conference and uh, two really good teams. We have a large crowd here tonight watching a couple of good teams putting in uh, really good efforts. And a foul called on Sorensen. That'll be his third personal foul. That's the sixth foul. The next foul on Southwest is going to send uh, Sheboygan South to the line. Bergman inbounding. Oh, he had, he had Kerwin open for what looked like about a 15-foot jumper, but uh, didn't get it to him soon enough. Just over three minutes to go. Again, South being very patient, trying to get a good look on this possession. Clock now under three minutes. Well, Bergman cut hard to the basket that time. Looked like he was open momentarily. 
Rodgers, 15-footer, scores! Rodgers has six. Nice little pop-back jumper, caught the ball, faded away just a little bit, and nailed it. Two-point lead. Kowaleski inside, short, but called for a foul is Wolfel. And that'll be four on Mark Wolfel. Kowaleski's really been a force this half. Uh, they, they were double teaming him a little bit in the third quarter. Uh, they kind of got away from that here in the fourth quarter and uh, he's hurting them. Rolls in the first free throw. He's the only player that scored for Southwest here in the fourth quarter. Well, they had a bad first half of shooting free throws, four out of eight, but so far they're four out of four here in the second half. A two for two trip for Kowaleski and we're tied again at 40 all. Two twenty-five on the scoreboard clock. Bergman out front. Stuby will try the drive. Jump shot from 15, good. Stuby has 11. It's a first field goal from inside the arc. Sorensen for three. No good. Stuby, strong rebound. Under two minutes to go. South by two, they have the ball. What a game. Stuby with a great shot that last possession. Bergman double team. Lost the ball. Call for the travel. Well, he got jumped that time by uh, Alcox, Jason Alcox, number three, and he wasn't expecting it, and that's what forced the turnover. Casey Zakowski will take time out. Minute 40 to go at South 42, Southwest 40. I guess we're staying with it, Mr. Martin. Might as Take well. Take a look at the south huddle. Well, that was a big possession. Uh, it's just unfortunate that South wasn't able to get a good attempt at the basket. Or run clock. Another good point because uh, there's only a minute 40 left. And uh, as this game has gone, really the entire contest, every possession has really been huge. Uh, having both teams only score uh, 82 points. And now at the minute 40, those possessions loom even larger. South has a couple things going in their favor. They have a foul to give, and they are in the bonus. And they're in the lead, most importantly. The only thing they don't have is the basketball right now. Southwest with the ball, the number one ranked team in the state, trailing by two late in the ball game. Kowaleski's been money in the second half and ties the game at 42. He has 17. We've seen this time and again from Southwest. They look for the screener, and that's what happened there. He set a back screen for Sorensen, and then he popped open in the low post. 1.15 to go. Tie game at 42. He's Bergman counting. better do something. We're going to call a blocking foul on Kerwin and don't get a Goofman technical better call, watch coach. it. Don't get a technical call. You're in the ball game. Nate Sorensen, or I'm sorry, Sorensen uh, was a player who was involved in that, but the foul call goes against Kerwin. A tough call to make with a tie ball game, that's for sure. Under a minute to go. Sorensen from three, in and out. Kerwin with the rebound. Well, Sorensen helped out Bergman because he slept down. He helped out on Kowaleski, and he didn't get back on defense. And that left Sorensen wide open. We got a whistle. South takes a timeout, and Koopman still barking at the ref. And we'll keep it right here, 44.6 seconds to go. And Mr. Martin, what do you do here? Play for one? A lot of time left. I think you play for the open shot. Uh, look for something uh, down low 
Uh, they had real good success with something like that uh, in the third quarter when they ran a lot of clock and they wound up getting it's Wolfel wound up getting Wolfel on a on a back cut for a layup. Uh, they had an opportunity with uh, Rogers and Kerwin on a similar thing, but they lost it out of bounds. I don't. I just think that 44 seconds is too long for a high school team to run out the clock, especially playing against a team that has been very strong defensively all night long. Really challenges the passing lanes. And as we've seen a couple of different times, uh, have converted on uh, knock, knocking the ball away or stealing passes and then getting the easy we saw, layup. We saw a lot of that when uh, Coach Koopman had taken some of his starters out of the game, and they just weren't used to playing against that kind of quickness. Uh, with the five he's got in right now, uh, it could happen, obviously, because Southwest is good on defense and they're very quick, but these kids seem to come to the ball a little harder and... Uh, I have a uh, little better sense of at what to do. Jason Alcox pressuring uh, Bergman, not letting him get the ball on the end goes yeah. to Wolfel. Now Bergman at 40 seconds. Stuby for three. Good! Stuby from the right side at 33 seconds. South by three. And Green Bay Southwest wants timeout. You gotta love that. He popped open on the off the baseline and was wide open. He squared up beautifully and took that shot and he nailed it. I was talking to my brother Tim, former coach at Nina High School just the other night, and something that he said makes a lot of sense concerning that play right there. You gotta let a shooter keep shooting. Stuby had a little bit of a cold second quarter. He hasn't had a real great shooting year, but he's been money here in the second half tonight. Well, and one of the things is when you got a kid that can shoot it, and he certainly can, you got to make plays and, and get him open. And uh, there was an excellent example of setting screens for your shooter and getting him open. Stuby has 14 on the night, four of them on three-point baskets, and perhaps the biggest shot of his career at the 33-second mark here of the fourth quarter has given South a 45-42 lead. He's been huge here in the uh, fourth quarter with eight points. He finished the first half with six on two three-pointers. Play the tough D, boys. That's what you got to do with 27 seconds left. There's a lot of things to remember. <laughs> Southwest to inbound the basketball. We're under 25. This is Jason Alcox. Good in the lane, travel called on Tom Alcox. South has the ball with 21 seconds to go. Great defense by Kerwin. He cut off the driver and forced the travel. And Hemsing checking in. What they're doing there, Coach uh, Stu, is they're taking out a big guy for a ball handler with 21 seconds left. And a better free throw shooter. You got to get the ball in right now. 21 seconds to go. Stuby breaks free. He has the ball, and he's fouled with 18.5 to go. Fourth foul on Sorensen, and we got to have a couple free throws here. He's got to make the first because it's the uh, old time one and one. And Hemsing checks out, and they're bringing a rebounder defender in in Wolfel. Good substitution pattern right there by Koopman. 18.5 seconds away from the biggest upset of the season. And probably one of the bigger victories that this gym and fans in this gym have ever, ever witnessed. Stuby's free throw hard off the rim. No good. Rebound by Rogers. Kerwin knocked that one loose. Rogers came up with the loose ball, and now Bergman's fouled. Now we saw the same thing happen when South played Manitowoc and that rebound went over uh, Kerwin's head. This time it went over the Southwest player's head and South was able to capture it. You remember all the times from the time you played grade school ball on how coaches said free throws are gonna decide games. Nate Bergman will go to the line. He's shooting about 60% on the season. Well, coming in for uh, Southwest, and I mentioned this in the first half, is number 23, Adam Dudek. He's a good long-range shooter. you got to keep an eye on him. 
But I'll tell you, if uh, Bergman can make at least one here, it's a two-possession ball game. Be fitting to see him uh, put a couple in. He's really been the architect of this upset. He's done it all tonight. But short on the free throw, loose ball. Bergman saves. This is Stubbe. We're at 10 seconds and another foul. Well, I'll tell you, they're playing with fire, Stu. I wish I could get a couple of free throws in. Well, I guess if you're going to miss, miss them long. That's two consecutive offensive rebounds off the free throw and another timeout by Southwest. Now nine seconds to go. 22nd timeout, so we'll keep it here. You know, it's amazing, Stu. You, coaches go through the whole week uh, analyzing how players play and how they're going to design their defense and what they're going to run on offense with X's and O's, and then it boils down to something as simple as a free throw. I almost get a sense that I and I don't think they would do it or talk about it because you want to be positive and get the made free throw uh, with nine seconds to go on a missed free throw a foul on South Park would almost make more sense. No, I, I don't think I don't like that because then you bring the ball down here on the offensive end. You also can't allow a tie two free throws doesn't tie the game. Well, not right away. Let's make the free throw and then it'll be uh, a mute point. There it is, Stubbe hits his first. He'll get another. He has 15, and South leads by four. You still have to play solid defense there. You see nine seconds left, exactly. Second is also good. South by five. Nine seconds, now eight. Under five, Sorensen. Good defense. No good, ball out of bounds. One-tenth of a second to go. Can you say upset? Nate Bergman played great defense. Sorensen did the pump fake to get him off his feet, and he never left his feet. He just hung tight on him. And that's the ball. And there game. it is. Ball game over. Sheboygan South with the biggest upset of the year, knocking off the number one ranked team in the state of Wisconsin, Green Bay Southwest, the final. South 47, Southwest. 42. Mike Martin is heading over to find a few players to interview, and we'll be back with a post-game wrap-up right after this. Sheboygan South stunned the number one rated team in the state of Wisconsin, Green Bay Southwest. The final score, 47-42. Mike Martin standing by with two of the heroes from tonight's ball game. Mike? Joining me over here is uh, Nate Bergman and... Uh uh, Ryan Stubbe and a great win tonight, Ryan. Yeah, it was a great win. Uh, we, we played a lot of good defense, and uh, we held Southwest 42 points. So, I mean, we came out and just knew we had to play defense, and we did the job. We talked to Coach Sikowski prior to the game, and one of the things he said he needed to do was to stop the penetration by you. Well, I, that number three, Alcox or something, he's a great defender, probably second best in the league. I think I'd probably be the first, but... Yeah, he saw my penetration, but our 5-0 really opened things up for us, our new offense. Uh, what did you guys do on offense that was different than what you used to do? Because I know you played a blocker where you kept two guys inside. Uh, Nate mentioned about the five-man motion. Is that what that is? Yeah, we, we try to spread out the floor so that they, we can idolize our quickness, and that's what we kind of did. You know, we spread out the floor, let our shooters shoot, and let Nate penetrate so we can spot up and shoot. Now, uh, you nailed some three-pointers tonight. Uh, you've had a little trouble with the three-ball this year. Yeah, um, I've been working on my shot in practice extra long. I've been in the weight room. I think that's helped me uh, get a little more aggressiveness and stuff. And at the end in the corner, I just felt it and I let it go. Uh, we talked towards the end of the game about, you know, with 44 seconds left and you guys had the ball, you know, what should you do? And I mentioned I think they should uh, take the first open look they got. And uh, they worked to get you open, Ryan. What do you think about it? Is that what Coach talked about at that last time out there? Well, actually, Coach kind of wanted us to work a little more, but a couple passes, and he was feeling it, so he stroked, and he came up big for us tonight. Now, Ryan mentioned before about the good defense, and that's really what won you the ball game tonight in the long run was the defense. Yeah, prior to the game, Coach Learman repeatedly said that our best offense now would be a great defense, and it was clearly a battle of defense tonight. Whoever played better defense was going to get the win, and I think we did it. Now, I know both of you boys are looking forward to the North-South game coming up next Saturday, but you have a game on Friday. Don't forget about that one. You've got to win that one first. That's the more important one right now. Yeah, East's going to be tough. I know they beat North and they beat us here. 
they're playing good. Um, we just gotta go out there, get a win, and hopefully, you know, come in in our south game and play on top. Guys, I want to thank you for stopping over. Uh, great game, great effort by both of you boys and all of your teammates. Uh, we mentioned a little bit about Rogers and uh, and Wolfel before we came on the air. They played good interior defense, but thanks a lot for stopping thank over. You. And we're gonna send it back to Stu. Again, congratulations, fellas. 47-40 through the final tonight. Sheboygan South with the victory. With the win, the Red Wings now go to five and four in league play, eight and six overall. The loss for Southwest, their first of the year. They're now eight and one in league play and 12 and one overall. Ryan Stubbe leading the way tonight for the Red Wings. He had 16. Nate Bergman added 11. Josh Kerwin with eight. Also, Chris Rogers scoring six. Mark Wolfel four. And Chad Iskin added a bucket to total 47. Two players in double figures for Southwest tonight. Justin Kowaleski, he had 17 to lead all scores. And then Nate Sorensen with 11. But a huge win for Sheboygan South. They don't get any better than this. And that will about wrap it up. I don't know what more you can say about this one. It was a great one. Congratulations to our crew. Another fantastic job. I want to thank you all for joining us. For my partner, Mike Martin, I'm Stu Hoppensberger. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this WSCS Classic. Sal's defense really made the difference, and Stubbe making some threes, the Red Wings were able to defeat the number one ranked Trojans. They did not leave Sheboygan ranked number one. Also, isn't it great to see all those familiar faces at the game? You still see many of those same people at the Fieldhouse today as they are loyal South followers. Our next classic will feature women's bowling from 2001. It is a classic you won't want to miss. Until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you down the road. There are many games that we would love to show, but no longer have. If you have a copy of a game that you think could be a classic, please get in touch with WSCS TV at 920-459-6663, and maybe we can get that game into our next classic series.